الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله الحمد لله جل وعلا وصلى الله وسلم على رسوله المصطفى ونبيه المجتبى وامينه على وحي السماء وعلى اله النجباء واصحابه الاتقياء خير الخلائق بعد الانبياء ومن بهديهم اقتدى وباثارهم اقتفى من المحدثين والمفسرين والفقهاء الى يوم الجزاء اما بعد فقد قال جل وعلا بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما يفعل الله بعذابكم ان شكرتم وامنتم وكان الله شاكرا عليما وقال جل وعلا يا ايها الناس اذكروا نعمه الله عليكم هل من خالق غير الله يرزقكم من السماء والارض لا اله الا هو فانا تؤفكون وقال جل وعلا يا ايها الذين امنوا اذا نودي للصلاه من يوم الجمعه فاسعوا الى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم ان كنتم تعلمون صدق الله العظيم I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Salutations upon the chosen one Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of resurrection. Respected brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this blessed day the ability to be present in the house of Allah, it's a great honor. It's a great blessing. Being able to thank Allah Azza wa Jal and the bounties that He has given us. And having the recognition of the bounties of the Almighty, this is a great ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First is to utilize the ni'mah. An acknowledgement of that blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is also a great ni'mah. Dawud alayhi salatu was salam, he communicated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said to Allah azza wa jal, Ya Rabbi kayfa ashkuruka wa shukri laka ni'mah. That, oh Allah, how can I thank you for your blessings? Even my thanking is a great blessing. Oh Allah, how can I thank you for your blessings? Even my thanking is a blessing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to Dawood that, Oh Dawood, at this junction you have thanked me. That when a person realized that even having the ability to thank Allah, having the ability to thank Allah, it's also a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there are millions of people living on the face of this earth, who utilize the bounty of Allah on a daily basis, but not a single moment of gratitude passes through their life. Not a single moment of thanking Allah, the Almighty who has provided us with all the things that we have, who has given us the things that we are able to count and imagine who, are, who has given us the things which, which, which we are not able to count and which are beyond our imagination. Everything is provided to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just having the understanding of that and showing gratitude, that's the great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, Allah azza wa jal, He promises security for those individuals who constantly Stay in the stage of shukr, gratitude. Allah Azza wa Jal promises them security from what? From taking away the blessing. From taking away the bounty that He has given them. From putting them into tests and situations and conditions. The security of Allah is given to those who show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and the security of Allah is snatched away from those people who are unthankful, who do not show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, why the blessings of Allah are being reminded? Because when a person, he uses a blessing for a long time, he even forgets that that's a blessing. Using it for a long time, every day you use it, your eyes, every day you use to see things. But how many times on a single day that a person thanks Allah that he has given me the ability to see things? Because there are many people in the world, they're not able to see things. They're not able to recognize things. They're not able to, to visualize the bounty and the, and the beauty that Allah has, has, has placed on this earth. Because we use it every day, it's a common thing. Now it's become just a common thing. That, you know, a person is seeing many things, never a thought comes into the mind that Allah has given me eyes to see. Allah has given me ears to hear. Allah has given me tongue to talk. Allah has given me senses. Allah has given me hands. These are, we are using it every day. So, it, when it becomes to a custom of an individual, it's very hard. This is why it's been reminded every single time. And for us to come to the Jum'ah prayer, it's a reminder. It's a reminder. It's a reminder of many things. This is why this day of Jum'ah holds a great value. Sayyidul Ayyam, it comes in the hadith. The Jum'ah is the, is the chief of all the days amongst the year. And the word itself, Jum'ah, is from Jama'ah, which is the gathering, where people gather to remember Allah, where people gather to remember the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the 62nd chapter of the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal has dedicated a whole surah, a whole chapter, just on this day. Just on this day. Surah Al-Jum'ah, in the 28th juz, dedicated just on this day of Jum'ah, to give us the importance that how important this day is in the life of a believer. But since it's coming on a weekly basis, we are not able to understand its virtue. In fact, take benefit from its virtues. And remember, when you don't appreciate the bounty of Allah, then you don't, take ben you, you don't get blessings from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are deprived of its benefits. So this is why many Jum'ahs come and many pass away. There is not a single change. Yes, it's another Friday. Yes, gone. Looking forward to the weekend, not the Jum'ah itself. I'm looking forward to the weekend. I'm not looking forward to the Friday. I'm looking for the weekend. Because that's the day of celebration of mine. Every person who is working on a Mon Monday to Friday work, he's looking for forward to the weekend. Why? Because that's the day that I, you know, I relax in my life. But the most important day of, 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 of the week is the day of Jum'ah, it's the day of Friday. So today we're going to talk about just on this day of Jum'ah, number one, the importance, number two, the virtues, and number three, the etiquettes, adab. Adab for this Jum'ah, the day of Jum'ah, etiquettes for coming to the masjid, what kind of heart and what kind of enthusiasm you're supposed to have, and what kind of things that a person needs to have in his mind when he's coming for this day. Because Alhamdulillah, we have many blessings that we are enjoying. And Thanksgiving Day is dedicated towards the acknowledgement of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah has given. So let's try to acknowledge the biggest blessing of Allah, which is the, the day of Jum'ah. First of all, we need to stop calling it the black <laughs> to begin with, right? 
It's called, you know, as my daughter always reminds me, it's a sale Friday. Sale Friday. You know, we're driving in the car, so my wife says, oh, you know any deals for the Black Friday? My daughter said, no, mom, it's a sale Friday. It's not a Black Friday. It's a sale Friday. Friday that has sales in it. She's sitting at the back smiling. It's a sale Friday. It's not a Black Friday. Because Friday for us is, it's, it's wholesome. It's new. It's light. It's blessing. So at least to the Muslims, we should try to establish that habit of saying it the sales Friday, right? So, of course, there are sales all around. People probably shopping the whole day, from midnight maybe. But try to bring that habit inside us. Because the, the, the moment you hear the word black, it just blackens your life. It's just a blacken in your life. So there is no looking forward to it. It's, you know, so you need to look forward to this day. So anyhow, as I was mentioning, 62, 62nd chapters, chapter number 62 in the Quran is dedicated for this day of Jummah. For this day of Jummah. And the reason why this day is called Jummah because everyone gets collected together. Everyone gets together. What are we getting together of? Allah Azza wa Jal starts the chapter off with what? The day should start off with what? يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ That's how you're supposed to start this day. Because Allah starts the chapter with this. That all glory is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Malik, who is the king. Al-Quddus, who has the ability to purify. Majesty. Al-Aziz, the powerful. The authority. Al-Hakim, the wise. So start the day of Jum'ah with what? With glorifying Allah. And remember, Jum'ah does not start today morning. It started last night after Maghrib. It started last night after Maghrib. So starting the day off with the preparation, a big day is coming. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu mentioned that we used to prepare for Friday from Thursday. So you might think what preparation you need. Just take a bath, come to the masjid, listen to the khutbah and go home. It doesn't require much preparation, does it? There are many components to this day. There are many blessings to this day. Because Allah selected this day for the believers. Allah selected this day to give bounties and blessings to the believers. So it has to have some kind of great significance in the selection of Allah that He has dedicated this day for His worship. The virtues, the good deeds that a person does on this day, it multiplies, it increases. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the best day of the week is the day of Jum'ah فَأَكْثِرُوا alayya salawat. The best day of the week is the day of Jum'ah so increase your salutation towards me. And the person who, does, who says salutations on the day of Jum'ah Allah has appointed an angel who takes the salutations and he presents to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Takes a salutation and presents in front of the Prophet ﷺ and he says to him that indeed this and this individual has sent you salutations. So salutations needs to be increased. Fa'akthiru means that throughout the rest of the week you should be sending salutations upon the Prophet. ﷺ. But on the day of Jum'ah you should increase it. So Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the surah, start your day with the glorification that Allah has given you this day. And then Allah mentions in the surah about the bounty that Allah has given you for recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم That Allah Azza wa Jal, He is what? He has given you this blessing that He has sent a prophet. Amongst those people who didn't have values of things and days and the bounties of Allah. By sending this prophet, they became valuable individuals because these were the people that were known as Al Ummi. They didn't have any civilization in their life, nothing. They were uncivilized people. But Allah brought civilization in them through what? Through the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is very important. And then look at this. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the four great messages or four work of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this ayah. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيَعْلِمْهُمُ الْكِتَابِ الْحِكْمَةِ Then he reads the message of Allah and he purifies them and he teaches them the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he teaches them wisdom in the previous verse verse number one of this surah Allah mentions four of his qualities al-malik al-quddus al-aziz al-hakim and in the next verse Allah mentions four work Four responsibilities on the shoulder of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the prophets that came before. Four responsibilities are in connection with the four qualities of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What is the purpose? Back in the days when they used to announce a message of the king, what they used to do is they used to send a person who would go to the village, get all the people of the village together, and he would read off the message that the king has to say. And everyone would come get together, everyone would get together, and they will listen to the message that is sent by the king, any type of things that they need to do. Allah is sending his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to read the message, yaklu alayhim ayati ay ayatullah, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what happens on the day of Jum'ah? People get together to listen to the message of Allah. This is not an entertainment. You're not coming here to play guitar or who does the best, you know, uh, show. We are here to come, we are here to listen to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why when we are listening to the message of Allah, we need to be in full utmost respect. We need to show that this is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to show people that we need to show each other indeed that this is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why there are etiquettes to this day of Jumu'ah to come early, to come with calm and peace, sit closer to the Imam, putting on your best clothes, putting on perfume. Do not hurt or shove each other. Do not talk when the message is being delivered. Not even to say salam. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, I went to the Salatul Jum'ah, I sat next to Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. While the khutbah was taking place, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the verse of the, uh, verse of the Quran. I wasn't aware when this was, verse was revealed because this was a new verse. So I looked at Ubay ibn Ka'ab and I told him, Mata nazalat hadihi al-ayah. When this ayah was revealed, Ubay ibn Ka'ab looked at me and he looked down. I repeated again, Mata nazalat hadihi al-ayah. When this ayah was revealed, he looked at me and looked down. The third time, so I completely be quiet, did not even ask. After the Salat al-Jum'ah was finished, I went to Ubay ibn Ka'b and I said, What's wrong, brother? Why are you not talking to me? I didn't do anything wrong. Why are you not talking to me? Look at the, look at the essence of it. And over here, we are tweeting messages. While you're sitting in Jum'ah, you're Facebooking. You're tweeting. You're chatting. 
So you cannot talk with another person, but the Quran does not say you can't text. So you and your friend are having a chat sitting on each corner, he's sending you messages and you're sending him messages and you're having a nice laugh. And you tell him, brother, why you're, this is Jum'ah. Quran doesn't say you can't use cell phone. Does Quran say you can't use cell phone? The communication. Because you're listening to the word of Allah. It has to be with the full attention, full dedication, full importance. So Ubayy ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu took Ibn Mas'ud to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the essence is when the Imam is giving a khutbah, he should be quiet. Should be quiet. فَمَنْ مَسَّ الْحَصَى فَقَدْ لَغَى Even a person who fixes the pebble to do sajda on it, or he's playing with the pebble, even he is doing the wrong thing. It comes in one hadith, مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَهُ The person who speaks while the khutbah is being delivered, he's not getting any reward for jum'ah. He's not getting any reward for jum'ah. This is why, why is this importance has been given? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ Because Allah's ayat has been mentioned here. So give respect to it. Show respect for it. Have understanding that this is the message of Allah. A lot of people say, you know, well, the khutbah is very boring, so I might do something else. I'm not going to waste 30 minutes of my time listening to someone who I don't even understand. Having the honor of the message. That's what, that's what needs to come into our mind. That this is a message that needs to be delivered. Shall our brothers just come closer if you see any space in front of you? And if there is no space, there is a lot of space in the downstairs hall. So you can go downstairs hall, inshallah, um, you can sit over there if there is any space here. <coughs> and then what? Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And the quality of Allah is mentioned, Al Quddus. The purpose of coming to Jum'a is to purify yourself. You're taking the message with you. You know, you clean your car every week. Or for some people, they wash it every day. They take the quack quack, unlimited car wash, $14.95, and wash my car every day. Right? Because it needs cleaning. You know, I need, the car needs to look nice. It needs to shine. So some people do it every day. If not, people do it every week. But sometime in a month, you do wash your car. Why? Because it gets dirty. No matter how much you clean it today, next week you'll wash it again. Because throughout the whole week, it gets dust on it. Right? Similarly, your heart needs cleaning. The purpose of coming to Jum'ah is tazkiyah. Cleaning yourself with bad habits. This is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even going to get to the next row, first of all you are, when you come to Jum'ah, you should sit closer to the Imam. You should not leave any gaps in front. And the person who is trying to go over people, that is also wrong. Your understanding should be that I should not hurt anyone. Otherwise what happens? All the reward is gone. So you are coming to Jum'ah to discipline yourself, to become better believers, to rectify your bad habits, to clean what is wrong from your heart, what is bad in your heart. That's the purpose of coming to Jum'ah. This is all from Surah Al-Jum'ah. I'm just connecting each ayah with the quality of Allah and putting it into our today's life. So, the message of Allah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the people from Allah is to purify people. And Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Jum'ah, the purpose of coming to Jum'ah is to purify yourself. That means every single day when you walk out the masjid, until the next week, there should be an improvement in your life. It should not be just this is another Jum'ah and that's it. There should be an improvement. There should be a rectification. I'm here to correct myself. I'm here to become a better person. I'm here to become a better believer. I'm here to understand. So purpose of coming to Jum'ah is to rectify yourself. 
is to inculcate good habits and to get rid of bad habits. To learn from each other. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muslimu mar'atul Muslim. A believer is a mirror to another believer. What does that mean? When you look in the mirror and you have something on your forehead, what are you going to do? Are you going to remove the thing is on your forehead? Or are you going to start cleaning the mirror? What are you going to do? You, sit, you stand in front of the mirror, there is something right on your forehead, a black spot or something. So now you say, to, so you say to the mirror, I am all perfect, you are wrong. So you start cleaning the mirror. No matter how much you clean, that dirty spot stays in you. The Prophet ﷺ gave that example. A believer to a believer is like a mirror. You reflect your life into the life of another person, you rectify yourself. You don't fix others. You're not coming here to fix others. You're coming here to fix yourself. That's the purpose of coming to Jumu'ah, to fix myself. Unfortunately, what happens is everyone becomes a dictator. Everyone becomes a mufti. Brother, you are doing something haram. Or your back is showing, so you're doing something haram. In front of the majma, people are leaving. Why? Because you've criticized someone. There is a way to deliver the message. If someone is doing something wrong, later on you take him to the side, you explain to him, don't put him in the right spot. And first of all, you're not, you're coming here to rectify your own self. You're fixing your own self. We have this impatience inside us that everyone, when it comes to the matter of religion, he becomes a, or she becomes a mufti or muftiya. That I have to give fatwa, that's it. Haram, haram, haram. You praying, you're right. Your hands should be here, not here. Your legs should be spread this much and not this much. All of these messages, what does it need to do? Rectification. If you want to tell the brother or sister that they're doing something wrong, you take them on the side. You speak to them in politeness. You speak to them in leniency. With love and affection. And then you will see how that message is taken. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the third purpose of coming into the for Jum'ah Al-Kitab wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent a messenger to teach you the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the quality of Allah is what? Al-Aziz which is in lining with Al-Kitab Al-Aziz is what? The one who has power the one who has respect, izza, Because power and respect, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the two qualities that when you find one, the person lacks the other one. Become powerful and having respect for people at the same time is a very difficult task. Because when you become powerful, you want to exploit. You want to exploit your power. You want to show people who's the boss. You want to show people who is what? So bringing both together, and that is in the law of Allah Azza wa Jal. When we understand the law of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, we will be able to put these together. Love and affection for people, at the same time giving them the message of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wal hikmah, al hakim, al aziz, al hakim, wal hikmah. Teaching them the wisdom, which is the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa Because the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is what? This is where it lies, wisdom. So a person came, a Bedouin came in the masjid of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And after prayers, he went on the corner of the masjid and start urinating. So all the Sahaba, they jumped on him, urinating in the masjid. As I mentioned, al ummiyin these were the illiterate people. They didn't know, no, no civilization inside, no nothing. They were, anyhow, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped all of them, let him relieve himself. 
After he relieved himself, the Prophet ﷺ said, clean up. After he cleaned, this person came up. And the Prophet ﷺ said, in a very nice, polite way, that this is the house of Allah, and you don't use, you don't relieve yourself in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person says, I've never seen a teacher who was more polite in my life than the Prophet sallallahu His message was so wholesome and so nice that he never insulted me, neither he said things to me. He explained to me in a very nice tone, which was sufficient for me. So this was the fourth thing. When we come here, we practice sunnah. And we take a sunnah. Today I have come into this Jum'ah. Now from today to the next Jum'ah, I'm going to practice one additional sunnah in my life. That's why I've come here. One additional sunnah in my life. And when I take that back, this is why, what did the Prophet Sallallahu said? Al-Jum'atu ila al-Jum'ati kaffaratun lima baynahuma is ajtunib al-kaba'ir. From one Jum'ah to the next Jum'ah, whatever sins are committed in the middle, Allah forgives, as long as you stay away from major sins. Why? Because each Jum'ah should bring a message in your life and it should become a rectification for yourself. So this is why the fadila has been mentioned, the virtue has been mentioned, the importance has been mentioned, now adab, etiquettes, having respect for people, coming early. The earlier you come, the better reward you get. Coming in calm and peace. You're not doing a favor on anybody else that you're coming for Jum'ah. You're doing a favor on yourself. This is the fadl of Allah. This is after the next verse. For you to come to the Jum'ah is a blessing of Allah. Allah has brought you here. So show your respect. Having that zeal in your heart. Listening to the Imam at the time of khutbah, not engaging in yourself, which is just a 35 minutes to a 40 minute message. Implementing it into our life, not, not communicating with other people. Not, not showing that I don't need the message, you know, having that zeal in your heart that I need the message. What happens when you do all of these etiquettes? Coming with proper clothing. Nabi Sallallahu said you should come to the, to the Jum'ah with proper clothing. Something that you are able to pray Jum'ah in. Something that covers your aura. Something that looks nice. Something that is there for you to cover your body. Putting on perfume before coming to Jum'ah. And when you finish Jum'ah, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah forgives your sins. And this Jum'ah becomes a source of bringing battery charge in your life for the next week. So until next week, your battery is charged. So this is why when we come to Jum'ah, we need to have all of these essentials, understandings that I'm going for a great day. Reciting Quran while you're waiting. Instead of talking to each other, reciting Quran while you're waiting. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person who recites Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jum'ah, Allah develops a light from his feet all the way to the sky. And in another hadith, Allah enlightens the whole week for him. Reciting Surah Al-Kahf, reciting the Quran, sending salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ, this is the blessings of this day. May Allah give us the understanding, may Allah give us the ability to give importance to this day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the virtues and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are taking benefit from this day. ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين والصحابه المقربين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحم امتي بامتي ابو بكر واشدهم في امر الله عمر واصدقهم حياء عثمان واقضاهم علي واقربهم واقراهم ابي بن كعب واعلمهم بالحلال والحرام معاذ بن جبل ولكل امه امين وامين وهذه الامه ابو عبيده بن الجراح رضوان الله عليه اجمعين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الله الله في اصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن احبهم فبحب احبهم ومن ابغضهم فببغضي ابغضهم ومن اذاهم فقد اذاني ومن اذاني فقد اذى الله ومن اذى الله فيوشك ان ياخذه او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Salutations upon the children of Muhammad, his companions, his family members, and those who follow their footsteps until the day of resurrection. Respected brothers and sisters, indeed, Allah has given us this blessed day of Jum'ah. One of the greatest virtues of this day of Jum'ah is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ فِي الْجُمْعَةِ لَسَاعَةً لَا يُوَافِقُهَا عَبْدٌ مُسْلِمٌ يَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى that in this day of Jum'ah, there is a moment that Allah Azza wa Jal gives to every believer. That when a person asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah grants him that prayer. And many of those, many of the scholars say that this is thus before the day of Jum'ah finishes, after Asr prayer. And the others, they say this is the time of Jum'ah when the Salat of Jum'ah is taking place. This is the time of accepting of dua, acceptance of Dua. So let's make that use of this of this time of this day and make dua for ourselves for our guidance for our protection for our families to be having happiness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to succeed in this life and the life of your after giving them guidance on the path which is selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dua for yourself for your family members <coughs> for your community for your children for your parents all of that Allah can grant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to accept because Allah says Ask from me and I will give you. So Allah is there to accept prayers. It's just the part that we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the ability to do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to take benefit from this day that Allah has given us. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma as'alaka minu abduka wa nabiyyuk. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ibadika salihun. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma as'alaka minu abduka wa nabiyyuk. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ibadika salihun. Wa anta al-musta'an wa alayka al-balaag. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-alihi al-azim. Allahumma gfir lana wa lil-mu'minin wa lil-mu'minat. Wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Al إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يسجد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وعز وأجل وهم أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة